All right, we're going to start with our fluency today. Put your markers down, please. The first thing we're going to do is skip count by fours to 40. Here we go. Four, Four eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. 36, 32, 28, 24, 20, 16, 12, 8, 4, 0. Nicely done. By fives to 50, please. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30. 25. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. I just want to see if you're paying attention. Okay, we stopped at 50, so now we go to 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, 0. Nicely done. Okay, today we will work a lot with fours. We're going to start our application problem. So if I can get you to face our board, just turn your body. Here is your application problem. Remember, for this part of our lesson, you we will read this problem together. You will draw a solution of your choice, and then you will write a complete sentence answer. We're using the RDW strategy. Red, orange, and blue scarves are on sale for $4 each. Nina buys two scarves of each color. How much does she spend altogether? Your task is to solve that any way you choose. You have six minutes. Any way you choose. I'm going to read it again. Red, orange, and blue scarves are on sale for $4 each. Nina buys two scarves of each color. How much does she spend all together? All right, please put your caps on your markers. It's all right if you aren't able to finish. Caps on your markers, please, in three, two, one. Z-E-R-O, turn back around to me. Show me your boards by holding them right here so I can still see faces. So I can still see faces. This is where your board should be. All right, I'm seeing some tape diagrams. I'm seeing some count bys. I'm seeing some equal groups. I'm seeing an array. I'm seeing a number bond from yesterday. Nicely done. Okay, normally at this time, I would invite you up and I would ask you to show me how you solve. But today's a little bit different. Our objective is to learn how to solve a two-step word problem. This is the first time you've ever been given a two-step word problem because in second grade, you were still on one steps. We have to be able to use the information from this application problem to help us with our next problem. So I'm going to ask you to turn your boards over Turn them over, don't erase, but we're going to use the back side. And I'm going to show you what I would do here. And then you can compare it to what you did, all right? I can tell you some of you got the, the correct answers. Some of you made very common mistakes. And remember, I told you that whenever we make mistakes, sometimes that's when we learn the most. So let's read this again. Red, orange, and blue scarves are on sale for $4 each. Nina buys two scarves of each color. How much does she spend all together? So the first thing we've learned to do is figure out our known information and our unknown information. We've been doing that for a while now. Known and unknown. Give me a piece of known information from this problem, please. Kiana. $4 each. What are $4 each? Scarves. Four dollars each. Okay, we're used to having how many pieces of known information? Two. Two, and how many pieces of unknown information? One. One. That's going to change just a little bit today. Cooper, what's another piece of uh, known information? She buys two scarves of each color. Okay, so two scarves 
each color. What's our unknown piece of information, please? Bella. The total. The total of what? Scarves. Do we need to, is it asking us how many scarves? How much money did money. she spend? How much does she spend? And if it's talking about how much you spend, it's talking about money, isn't it? So how much money did she spend altogether? We're not sure. So here's what I would do. I would use a tape diagram. We've been using those for several days now. So I want you to start creating your tape diagram, please. Oh. Remember, we're going to leave the end open because we're not quite sure yet how many units we need. Okay, let's look back at our knowns. These scarves are $4 each. She buys two scarves of each color, and then we have our unknown. Is there anything here that tells me how many units to create? Mm -mm. Grayson, do you think so? What, what are you she thinking? She buys two scarves of each color. Okay. So, three colors. Three colors. So, two scarves times three, times three <gasps> gives us two six. bits of three, three, six. Okay? That's just some extra information we needed. That tells us to create six units. So, please draw six units. And if you get to the end like I did and you have some extra space, we're just going to erase those right off. And then double check. One, two, three, four, five, six units. Notice that my units are equal in size. Yours need to also be equal in size. Nope, yours are close enough. Don't worry about erasing. Remember, they won't ever look perfect on a whiteboard, and that's all right. They won't look perfect on our paper either, will they? Not unless we used rulers, and that's really not necessary. Okay, so tell me our knowns again. Two. Cooper. Four dollars each. Four dollars each. So would I label my unit or my total tape diagram with that four dollars each, Cooper? Total. Would this total diagram be four dollars each? Uh, no. no. Where would that go? Can I draw my brackets? Would that be our unit or our total? Unit. Kelsey? That's our unit. So right here we want to put four dollars. I'm going to introduce a vocabulary word that we haven't used yet. This unit represents one scarf, but the value of this unit is four dollars. So we're used to saying this represents four hot dogs or five peaches. Today we know it represents one scarf, but we're adding money, so we know the cost or the value of each. Okay, four dollars. Or six crackers. What else do we need to label? What else do we know? We have two scarves of each color. Grace in here to help us figure out two times three is six. We've used this here. We've used this. What haven't we? Add six in the each. Oh, actually, here. We can do this. We could go ahead and say six scarves here. But then we need to label our unknown. AJ, help me. Fair share. I mean. We're just labeling. We're going to get to that in a minute. Um, all together and then a question. Yes. How much money altogether? Because that's our unknown. How much money does she spend altogether? Okay, get that labeled. Now I want you to show you something that we could do instead of just counting to six. If you weren't quite sure that you needed, or if you didn't know to multiply two times three, you could have done this. Nina had two red scarves, two orange scarves, and blue, two blue scarves. So you could have just labeled those R, O, and B. Okay. What's the value of each unit? Four. 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 So let's go ahead and label those. Okay, 
have we labeled everything that we know to label? Yeah. Yes, we have. So now you can solve. I want to see an equation. So right here where I have the circle, I'm not telling you whether you need to use the operation symbol for addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. You have to determine that on your own. So right here I should see an addition, subtraction, multiplication, or operation symbol, or division operation symbol. up here with me. Caps on your markers. How did we solve? What did you do, Maggie? I um, like, did like the, um, like, like, uh, like, I did the, I made the circle You use the fair share strategy? Okay. So, you, once you did that, you determined there were four in each, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But did you know the total? So how do you figure out the total? How do we know how much those scarves cost all together? What do we have to do, Zion? Um, you have to count by fours, like four for each job. So we have four in each group. How many groups of four did we have? Six. Six. So I'm going to take this away. We had six groups of four. Count by fours with me six times. Eyes right here. Eyes here. Ice here. Four, eight, eight 12, 16, 20, 24. Six groups of four equals 24. So, what does our complete sentence answer sound like? How much does she spend all together? Nina spends $24 all together. You could say in all, but since our problem says all together, I like to use as many words from the problem as possible. What do we call that when we do that? Restating. Restating. Nice job. All right. Erase, please. We'll move on to our cell. Mrs. Landis just messed up. You were not supposed to erase. I did. We're so, we're so used to erasing everything. You let me keep what I have. You can, it's all right if you erased already. That's okay. Wait, do we erase both I would definitely erase the side where you tried solving on your own. Yes. Hey, you'll find out why I, I shouldn't have told you to erase here in a second. Hey, look at this problem. Red, orange, and blue scarves are on sale for $4 each. Does that sound familiar? Uh, yeah. Nina buys two scarves of each color. She also buys a hat that costs $4. How much does she spend all together? Turn to your shoulder partner very quickly. Tell them what is different from this problem, from the first problem. She buys a hat. Me back with me. Five, four, three, two, one. C R O. What is the difference between this problem and our first problem, Eli? Um, she bought a hat. She bought a hat. So let me show you how I would add a hat. I would come right up here. How many hats did she buy? One. 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 So I just need one unit. And right out here, I would write hat. If you still had this on your board, you would copy this on your board for me. What did these units represent? The scarves. Thank you for saying that loudly enough that I could hear. These represent scarves, so we're going to have to start labeling our tape diagrams from now on whenever we complete a two-step problem. What do I know about that hat other than there's just one? Then what else do I know about the hat? Um, uh, is it costs four also. 
it costs four dollars also so right here i'm going to have my four dollar value and i'll just label it in there with four dollars okay so first our unknown was how much does she spend on the six scarves what does it say now how much does she spend all together so what do you think you're going to do to solve that? Layton, what's your idea? Skip count. Skip count by how many times? Uh, seven. Four times. Seven. Two. Four times? Four times would get me to four scarves. Seven. Six times would get me to six scarves. Do I want to just figure out the cost of the scarves? What else do I need to know, Layton? How much the hat is along with the scarves. So how many groups of four is that? Help her out. How many? Seven. So that's seven. We have six groups of four plus one more group of four. What's a way to show seven groups of four? Say it louder. Seven times four. So how do we solve that? We're going to skip count. Markers down. I want. I would love to see your fingers count with me to make sure we stop at the right spot. Ready? Four, Four eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. Seven groups of four is $28. Now I have to tell you, most third graders wouldn't recognize that we added another group of four. They would have seen it. But I don't think that's the way they would have solved. Can anyone think, anyone think of another way we could have solved? If we know that the scarves add up to $24 and a hat costs $4 more, what else could we do, Tristan? Um, How could I find the total? We could just um, <gasps> add. No. Yes, let's go with it. What oh, would we add? We could just add $4 to our. Four dollars plus what was the cost of the scarves? Seven, seven, Twenty-four dollars. How much is that? Twenty-eight. Because we have four ones plus four ones is eight ones. Two tens. Twenty-eight. All right. If you have anything on your board, erase all of it. Let's go on to our next problem. This is problem two. This is the problem that we will stop on after we've solved this one today, and then you'll have time to solve some with a partner, all right? Problem two. Mr. Lim buys seven plants for his garden. Each plant costs $5. The next day, he buys a rose bush that also costs $5. How much more do the seven plants cost than the rose bush? Let's read it one more time. Mr. Lim buys seven plants for his garden. Each plant costs $5. The next day, he buys a rose bush that also costs $5. How much more do the seven plants cost than the rose bush? Hmm. We're going to go with the tape diagram. So we're going to write our gnomes. And our unknowns. You don't have as much room on your whiteboard as I have on mine, so just like in the past days, it's all right for you to let me write the knowns and the unknowns up here. If this problem was in front of you, what would you do to mark your knowns and unknowns? What have we been doing? No, you haven't been. Labeling. You've been passing out directions to show that you've completed a step. Labeling. That's exactly right. But how have we been saying? Oh, this is known information. Label. We look at the problem and then see what we what we know on that. Okay. What have we been doing to it, Eli? Circling or underlining. There we go. We've been circling or underlining. Okay. Known information. Mr. Lim buys seven plants for his garden. What do we know? <laughs> He buys seven plants. That's his total, correct? Yeah. Each plant costs five plants. Okay, let's read our second sentence. Daniel, read that second sentence starting with each for me. 
Each plant costs $5. What's our, what's our known, please? The $5 for each plant. Okay, so I'm going to put $5 each. We don't have to write the whole sentence, do we? Third sentence. Colton, you want to read the next day? The next day. The next day, he, he buys a rose bush that also costs $5. Okay, then, stop there at the period. What Do I know information, or is there something that's unknown in that sentence? The next day, he buys a rose bush that also costs $5. We're used to just having two knowns. Remember I told you today that would change? It's going to be okay if we have three knowns this time. What is that telling us <laughs> about a rose bush? <coughs> it also costs five dollars. There's one rose bush. I'm going to put a, a little arrow with a one right here. One rose bush. How much more do the seven plants cost than the rose bush? So what's our unknown? Um, how much more does it cost? How much more are the plants? The than the rose bush. Okay. So get ready for your tape diagram. Do we know how many units we need? No. Yes. 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 We need no. eight. We need eight. We need eight. Well, the way seven. that we are going to create our tape diagrams, we're actually not going to we're use gonna eight. Seven. We're going to create seven. We're going to make make them separate. So we're going to have the plants here and the rose bush up above. But good thinking to realize we needed eight all together. Please make your units the same size. Very close to the same size. Do what I did, double check, make sure you have the correct number. I am going to shrink my writing so that I have some room here. I'm going to write the same information again, just smaller. <coughs> go now I've got some more room because right here we need that rose bush don't we so I need seven units for the seven plants one unit for the rose bush do you see how I made the unit for the rose bush the same size as the unit for the plant at least it's close why is that because it's still it goes right here it's in yeah it's the same cost as a plant where did I place this right above my first unit for plants. So I need yours to be right above your first unit for plants, but leave a space. It doesn't belong over here. It doesn't belong up here. It doesn't belong down here. It's very important that you put it right above. That's going to help us see visually that they are the same size. Mr. Long, I want it moved, please, to the correct space. Thank you. Mr. Harchie, to the right space, please. It's okay if you go up here. Just right here. All right. So we know there are seven plants. Let's label that on our diagram for plants. Seven plants. Okay. I'm going to put a little check because that is information that I know and I label it. <coughs> So what you could do on your paper, you could just put a little check above that underlined known. $5 each. Do I label that here or do I label it down here for the total? Right here, right? I'm going to label it really small. And what do we call that? A unit. This is called a unit. A unit represents one plant, and what do we call that five dollars? It's our new vocabulary word for today. Value. The value. The value of that unit is five dollars. What else did we know? One rose bush is five dollars. Where does that label belong? On the bottom. 
in the in the thing. Oh, in the beside it. Beside the. Oh, oh, show me. Show me on your board. Beside here. Well, that is. You're right. That's where I'll write rose bush H A. Good thinking. You remembered we needed those labels. That means I'm going to go ahead and come down here and I'm going to write plants. Thanks for reminding me. <coughs> but where do I put that one rose bush is five dollars? Do I have a unit that represents one rose bush? Kaden, is this for one rose bush here? Are any of these down here for a rose bush? Or are they just for plants? Just for plants. So where's where's our rose bush? Right here. So that's where we need our five dollar value, right up here. That's okay. Yes, but there's a lot to remember. Okay, done with this, put our check. What is unknown? How much more do the plants cost than the rose bush? Hmm. Okay, so right here, should I write how much more? Do I know how much those plants cost yet? Whoops. Do we know how much the plants cost? Do we have to find that out before we can find how much more plants are than the rose bush? Do no. we have to find out the cost of the plants? No. We don't? Yes. 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 I'm not sure that I could find out how much more they cost if I'm not sure of the cost of the plants. <coughs> so right here, I'm just going to put dollar plants cost. <coughs> Remember I told you these are called two-step word problems? This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Did this say anywhere, students, you need to know the total cost of the plants first? No. No. It's like this mystery unknown that we have to uncover. So first we're going to find the total plants cost. How, are, how am I going to do that? Um, these are our plants. We <gasps> count by five. Going to count by fives how many times? Seven. 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 Why am I counting by five seven times, Kelsey? Um, because there are seven plants. And seven each plants. Five dollars. Did we label each of these with five? We didn't. Do we have to? No. In the past, we've been putting it in there, but see how we labeled this one? And this indicates that each of them is five dollars. So we do not have to put it in there as long as we understand each of them has a value of five. So let's count by five seven times. Here we go. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So how did we find that? We counted by fives seven times. Seven groups of five <coughs> equals $35. Seven groups of five, make sure you get your dollar sign there, is $35. We're almost done. We know the total cost of the plants. We know the cost of the rose bush. So now we need to answer how much more do the seven plants cost than this little rose bush right here? How do you think we're going to figure that out? Kaden, what do you think? Um... We could subtract. What could I subtract? Five. And Five from? From the 35. I think that is an incredible idea. $35 <coughs> minus $5 would be how much? 30. 35. 30. 30. That's right. Just like we skipped count. Going backwards, $30. $35 minus $5 is $30. So our sentence answer would be, how much more did the seven plants cost than the rose bush? We would say the seven plants <coughs> cost $30 more than the rose bush. Do you remember what I love about math the most? Uh, that when you were that you can solve in different ways. Well, I do love that it's challenging. 
that you can solve it in many ways. You can solve it in many ways. There's another way that I could figure out that these plants cost $30 more than that rose bush. Anyone want to take a guess at how I could do that using this tape diagram right here? Tristan, what are you thinking? Um, wait, what was the question again? Okay, do you know how I could use the tape diagram to <coughs> see how much more the plants cost than the rose bush? Um, you could put the. It's okay. I'm not trying to confuse you. You might not see it like I do, but eventually you will. Ella? Oh, that's good thinking, a number bond, but not in this case I wouldn't use a number bond. You can subtract the 75, that would equal 3, and then, and then, and then there would be a zero, and then you can subtract the 30. Well, let me, let me show you here. You see how these match up? Okay, so the rose bush costs as much as one plant, correct? What do I have left? The cost of six plants. Oh my goodness. Some of you are thinking, that made no sense to me. And you know what? That's okay. We're going to keep practicing, and eventually I'm hoping that you'll start to see some things like this. Count by five six times. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. So six plants cost thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. That's how much more the plants cost than that rose bush. Erase everything. Stay quiet so you can hear our directions. Okay, markers down, erasers down. Okay, it's time for independent or partner practice time. So all eyes are here. I said erasers down. Right this second. Markers down, right this second. Okay, this is the time when you are going to be working with your partner. You will get a problem set and you'll get homework. Remember that these mirror each other. So the problems on the problem set are exactly like the problems on the homework. The only difference is you're going to see different names and different numbers. Do you see how both of these give us a tape diagram? Okay. Over on our board, you can see that the problems I have told you today that you must do or must attempt in the 10 minutes are problems one and two. So the first thing you'll do is you'll label the problems M for must do. On the back, number three is going to be one you could do if you have time. And number four and five, if you have more time than that, you can pick one of those. Whenever you go home tonight, you are only responsible for completing number one and two. Just like in class, you're completing number one and two. Okay? You will complete these with a partner. When the 10-minute timer sounds, what will you be doing? Putting it on a clipboard, and heading back to the carpet so that we can review them together. Do you have any questions? Review the two problems that you practice together with your partner. If for some reason you weren't able to complete those, both of those problems in 10 minutes, it's okay. Whenever I complete it here, if you notice anything different in the way that I solved and you solved, you make sure that yours looks like mine. Because what does this turn into when we take it home? Homework helper. Exactly. This is now your homework helper. So you're going to take this home tonight to help you complete the two problems that are very similar on your homework page. Okay? All right. So let's look at that first problem. Ted buys three books and a magazine at the bookstore. Each book costs $8. A magazine costs $4. <coughs> So here, they've shown us that a magazine costs $4. There are three books, so they have three units. Each book costs $8. What is the total cost of the books? So what was the first thing that you and your partner decided needed to be done here? Bella? Um, put, um, put in the labels. Talk really loud for put me. Put in the labels. Normally, we do put in labels. But these are actually already labeled for us. So this is not for a label like it used to be. This actually.
actually won't be for a label. We're, we're moving a step up with our uh, tape diagrams. Um, you need to put your groups in there. You need to put our groups. How much does each book cost? Eight dollars. And part A says, what is the cost of the books? What was the cost of the books? Sixteen dollars. Hmm. How many groups 20, do we have? Twenty-eight. Class, listen to my question. How many groups do we have? Three. Three groups of? Eight. Eight. Now, I don't know about you. I'm not very good at counting by eights. We haven't practiced skip counting by eights yet. So instead, we're going to use that commutative property that we've already learned about, and we're going to flip-flop these because order doesn't matter with factors whenever we're multiplying. Two numbers. So we're going to count by threes eight times. Ready? Three, Three six, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four. We're getting very fluent at that, aren't we? 24. So right here, Bella, that label that we need, we actually want it to say $24. So in this box, $24. That's showing the total cost. Okay, we already know the cost of the magazine. That's why they shaded this for us. What is the total cost of the books? We need a complete sentence. The total cost of the books is $24. So notice I used my multiplication equation and a complete sentence answer. If you don't have a multiplication equation and a complete sentence answer, add that in right now. Right now. We're short on time. You've got to get it done. This is what you're writing next to A. Not looking at our partner's paper when Mrs. Landis's board is right here. And this is the correct information that needs to go home with us. Okay, part B. How much does Ted spend all together? That's why this bracket is here. This bracket right here, on your page, it gives you a dotted box that's saying, fill me in. So we know the books cost $24. We know the magazine costs $4. How many groups of eight do we have? Three. Three groups of eight. Is this a group of eight? No. No, this is half of eight. Do you see how this is half the size of this unit here? Yeah. It's only half as much. So I can't count four groups of eight. I'm going to have to add, right? So $24 plus the cost of our magazine. What's 24 plus 4? 28. $28. I hope that more than one of our third graders knows 24 plus 4 equals $28. Write that number sentence down. And we're going to write our complete sentence answer. How much did Ted spend all together? Whoops. I wasn't restating. I caught myself. Ted spends $27 altogether. Almost. You're restating correctly. Ted spends $28 altogether. There we go. I wrote in two different colors so it's easier for you to see them. How many of you thought that this was a little bit easier than the problems we solved this morning? How many of you, or the, this morning, earlier, how many of you were having trouble with this one? Did you have trouble not knowing how to solve it or not knowing what went in the boxes? Not what was the hard what? part? Not, um, um, well, it was kind of confusing because they're like, one label over here, which is not the picture. We haven't ever seen this label before, have we? Before today, we've never seen two tape diagrams together. So this label, do you see how this bracket 
closes in this tape diagram plus this one. So this is for part B. This right here is for part A. In the future, if you're not sure what information needs to go there, you ask me and I can help you with that. Okay? So right here, that's where we would write $28 and then we are done with problem one. Okay, do you have that labeled $28? Oh, let me, let me correct an error. I'm seeing some of you write it this way. This is the way we say it, $28, but that is not the way that we write it. Our dollar sign label goes in front. So make sure, it looks like $28, but that's not the way that we read it. All right, let's solve that second one. Seven children share 28 silly bands equally. Part A, how many silly bands does each child get? I have seven units for the seven children. I have 28 total silly bands. Hmm. Whenever we know the groups, but we don't know the amount in each group, we're dividing. 28 divided by 7. How can I solve that? Daniel, what strategy is that? It is called the fair share strategy. Fair share strategy. So my guess is you figured that out because this class is excellent at fair share strategy. So, so far I have 7, then 14. Continue. I have 21. Now I have 28. Okay, I've divided them equally. Each unit has a value of 4. So 28 divided by 7 is 4. But right here, I've got two labels. What is the value of one unit? Arid, what's the value of one unit? Um, right here. Silly bands. Yeah, just four silly bands. How many silly bands does each child get? Each child gets Four, four silly bands. bands. I'm going to proofread. I'm going to check my question. Silly bands is two words. I wanted to make sure that silly bands wasn't a compound word. And I wrote that correctly. I've got my period. Now I'm ready to go to part B. How many silly bands do three children get? Some of you were confused by this bracket down here. It's there because we also have to show how many bands three kids get. Kelsey, what did you do to solve this? I added 4 three times. So you did repeated addition. 4 plus 4 plus 4. Count by 4 three times. 4, 8, 12 equals 12. Is there a faster way than using repeated addition? What else could I do? How many groups do I have? Three groups of 4. 3 times 4 equals 12. Hey, we did do a count by when we skipped counting about that. Same thing. Thinking. Hey, how many silly bands do three children get? Twelve. Three children. Write your complete sentence answer. If you didn't get twelve silly bands. <laughs> Period. All right. So if you are not finished with these problems, you are going to make yours look like mine so that you've got your homework helper to take home tonight. If you are done, whenever I say go, you will be taking this and putting it in your take home folder. Make sure your homework is there. They both have your name on them and they are ready to go. The rest of you just stay here until you get all of this down and then we'll move on to our next subject, all right? Okay, before you go, tell me what is still confusing for you. What are you still having a hard time with? Um, like all the, labeling and like the, writing and the labeling was confusing today, wasn't it, Bella? Because we, what we did is we've advanced our, our thinking with tape diagrams. We're used to writing the unknowns and the knowns and labeling all of those, but we didn't label as much anymore. Just like, do you remember the second problem I think that we did today? We had groups of five. Did we have to write five dollars in each unit? Or could we leave some of them blank since one was labeled? Class? No. 
Did we have to label each one? No. no. So it's going to get a little more advanced, <laughs> but we will practice. Just know we're going to keep practicing for several days. Yes? Um, what goes um, on there? Oh, right here. Thank you. This needs to be a 12. Uh, yeah. Yep, 4, 8, 12. I forgot to label that. I would have missed a point. Yay, Wouldn't I? Yeah, you would. mm -hmm. That's why, what do we have to do before we turn our work in? Proofread. 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 Pro